So welcome to the reactive programming in Android Meter. Uh, so just a brief introduction about me. Uh, I have been uh, uh, in the industry for around uh, almost 7.5 years. And uh, most of my work has been uh, in mobile domain. Uh, currently I am associated with Talentica software. Uh, I joined like two years back. I am also one of the co-organizers for uh, Pune Mobile Developer uh, Meetup group. So uh, during this meetup I will be taking some polling. So you know, just honestly answer if uh, whatever you want to answer. So nobody is judging you, so you can answer uh, honestly, right? So reactive programming is actually it's a uh, it's a it's a big concept, and there is a steep learning curve. But once you learn it, so you will see that how easy it will make your uh, your lives as a developer, as a, especially as an Android developer. So the more I learn about it, you know, the more I feel that uh, this is a library that should be included uh, by default in uh, even in Hello World projects. Uh, so, you get the point, right? <coughs> so uh, I mean, this I'll consider this meetup a huge success. If you today, when you go out, I mean, after this meetup, uh, just try out reactive programming. So, okay. Oops, sorry. Um, Okay. So, how many of you are uh, professional Android developers who develop Android apps for a living? Okay. That is to be expected. This is Android. <coughs> okay. And how many of you have heard of reactive programming and implemented it in your projects? Okay, that's good. So, this is actually very basics. Plus, we'll co we'll be covering some uh, uh, some very uh, some intermediate and advanced concept, but mostly it's basic. And uh, some of the concepts are very generic, not uh, especially related to Android, uh, reactive programming in general. Okay. Okay. So you, some of you have also done Rx Java, right? Ha has anyone used Rx Java one, the older version of uh, Rx Java? You have used it. Okay. So it's a significant improvement. Okay. Okay. So let's start. Uh, yeah. So today's agenda is uh, we'll be seeing what is reactive programming and why we should be using it. I mean, there are already uh, so many models available out, out there. Right? So why we should be uh, learning a new model? And then we'll see what is reactive extension. Uh, we'll see RS Java and Android. Uh, components of reactive programming. This will be the uh, this is the main uh, topic of this uh, meeting. And then you'll see how we can use a retrofit with reactive programming. Right? And we'll see some of the operators. Uh, there are so many operators, you know, I cannot cover everything, but uh, uh, I've covered like some of the operators. And then we'll see how it, uh, RX Java helps us in testing also. So during this meetup, if you have any questions, you know, just you can raise your hand and you can ask the question. You can stop me right there. Uh, if you wait till the end, we'll lose the context. And uh, so, you know, uh, just ask at the right time at the, at the moment when you get the question. Okay. Uh, so, reactive programming, Wikipedia definition is it's an asynchronous uh, programming paradigm concerned with data flows and propagation of change. There are some big words here, I know. Uh, so, in simple words, it's just uh, uh, programming with asynchronous uh, streams of data, data streams. So, in you know, uh, it's it's nothing new. Uh, it's always been there. It's just uh, some advantage. We have actually, you know, uh, they've modified it. A bit. Uh, is everybody familiar with observer pattern? Yeah. So it's like uh, you know, it's a combination of observer pattern and iterator pattern, plus uh, some other things. We'll see. So first of all, uh, why do we need asynchronous programming? So I'll explain in terms of Android, because you know you don't want to block the UI. Blocking the UI is evil. When you block the UI, uh, especially in an Android application, uh, what happens? You get this. Right. I hope everybody has seen this in your apps that you developed. <laughs> I have seen them in Facebook as well. Okay. <coughs> problem with your phone. <laughs> <laughs> when this happens, when this happens, then what happens? Right? You have sad users, and when the users are sad, this is what they do. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, I've seen this type of. Uh, <laughs> 
these kinds of reviews. <laughs> there are so many. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I made up the first one, but the rest are real. <laughs> okay, so now that we know why we need asynchronous programming, uh, so now it will make some sense because we don't want to block the UI. Asynchronous programming means uh, simultaneous operations, right? You you don't want to queue the operation so that one finishes and you do something else. So asynchronous is like you are doing multiple operations at the same time, and uh, as soon as the operation finishes. Uh, you will get some sort of callback so that you can uh, code accordingly. Okay, so uh, this uh, is there anyone who doesn't know who's Jake Wharton? So if you don't know Jake Wharton, then you're probably a new Android developer, newbie, or you're lying about being an Android developer. Trust me. So this is uh, I took this uh, I mean idea from his one of his talks, which uh, by the way I mean you should all watch. Has anybody seen this talk? DevOps 2017? You have seen that. Okay. So consider this a simple interface. Uh, it has three methods, get user, set name, and set age. So the complexity arises when you when these are say asynchronous, these are updating uh, you know some remote database. So what we do is we cannot just call these methods like this because we want to know uh, if some error happens or it succeeded or not. If some error happens, so we can take some actions accordingly. Right? So we want some sort of callback. So this is the popular way to do it. Like this is a standard Java way to do it. You add some listeners, and the listeners will tell you if the uh, callback succeeded or it failed. Right? Yeah, any questions? So now, uh, now when you try to use user manager to set a name, right, you'll do this. You'll pass actually the name that you want to set. You get user manager from some uh, say factory method, or you create like a retrofit API, and then you'll pass the callback, success and failure. So if some failure happens, could be like a network failure, or could be 404, or whatever failure is there, it will report here in the on failure method. And success, it will return the same user instance, uh, the, the user instance from the remote database. Now, uh, if you want to do set age also. So now this becomes complex. This start becoming complex. Right? There are. I just all I want to do is set uh, set name and set age, and now I have to deal with four cases. And there could be like if you mix and match, there will be so many com complex cases for simple operations. And it becomes more complex when you try to uh, you know uh, when you try to uh, execute this operation one after the other because the output from one API is dependent on the other. Then you'll put this entire thing inside the on success of this. Because I want this to execute only when set name succeeds. So right, I, I'll put it there. Like this. So this, if you I don't know if you've heard of the term or not, this starts becoming callback hell. This is one callback, this is second callback, and if I want to do something else, based that is based on the result of this callback, there will be third level of callback. Um, in uh, one of the uh, apps that I worked on. Believe it or not, there was ten levels of nested callbacks. Ten levels. It was going out of the page. You know, <laughs> you cannot see it in one screen. So this is actually. Uh, so this is not the end of the story. Now, based on the uh, API call that we are doing, right? We uh, based on the result, we want to, uh, let's say, update the UI. I want to update a text view or uh, just up update some UI that okay, you have logged in or your, your name is set, right? So I'll do this. Text you inside the on success of this. Just set the set the value, set the username in that text view. So the problem is, by this time we don't know if the activity is alive or not. So we have to add a check if destroyed. If the activity is destroyed and you try to do this, what will happen? It will give you. It will crash that. It will crash the application. Excuse me. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll put this check. And plus there is another problem. Uh, let's say. Uh, set name is called, it got succeeded. Then set age, we're calling set age and it's taking some say 10 seconds to complete the operation. And after 10 seconds, if it succeeds, we'll update the UI. So before, let's say set, as soon as the set age, uh, this API starts to you know, do its thing, the asynchronous thing, and you close the activity, there's a short term memory leak here. Because the activity is destroyed and you're still holding this full reference of that activity. So there's a short term memory leak. We don't want that uh, memory leak to happen. 
right? And plus, since we have not specified any threads here, and you cannot update a, a UI from a background thread, right? You need to pass the data to a UI thread, and then you have to update it. So we'll need to do this. You'll, you'll need to pass everything in the run on UI thread method, right? So now, yeah, just look at this. It's, start, it's, it's becoming called back hell for fairly simple operation. So this is where reactive programming excels. Uh, uh, it's a you know uh, it's a library for dealing with asynchronous streams of data. So reactive programming is basically a combination of observer pattern plus iterator pattern and plus uh, some functional support. So is there anyone who has only worked in Java, not in Kotlin or JavaScript or Swift or only Java? Okay. So then you will find functional support very important. Okay. So it's a combination of all these. Uh, I, I wouldn't have wanted to write functional programming here, but uh, you know, it's not functional programming because if you write if you write functional programming here, so it starts becoming functional reactive programming, which is, uh, I mean, which is not the topic of today's meetup. So just some functional supports. Uh, and this is not the end of the story, there's more to it. Uh, it provides uh, concurrency, plus resilience, plus it en enhances readability, and this is not the end of the sto story. Right? Uh, it's a reactive programming meetup, so you know I should be saying good things about reactive programming. But uh, I mean, even uh, if this were this was not a reactive programming meetup, and you had asked me somewhere, right? I'll I'll say that uh, I'll say all these things uh, either way. <coughs> so observer pattern, if you're not familiar with it, uh, what it does is there's a subscriber, there's a there's a source of data, and it emits some data. It emits some data. And there are subscribers, or you can call it observers, and they subscribe with the source. And after subscription, whenever it, uh, the source emits the data, they receive it. So this guy probably subscribed uh, earlier, so it has more data than less the number of data. So and if the subscribers, if they don't want the, da the data, they can unsubscribe with the source, and uh, the the data won't be uh, propagated to the subscribers. Now, this is a standard observer pattern that was brought in by the gang of four. Uh, but this observer pattern has uh, some issues, two issues to be specific. One issue is there is no way for the observer, I mean the source. Okay, when I say observer, it's the one who is observing and receiving the data. And observable or source is, this is, uh, is the one that is emitting the data or sending the data. So there is no way for the source to inform the or subscribers or observers that okay, I'm done. I don't have any more data. It cannot say okay, I'm complete. There's no completion handle. There's no, no, there's no completion event in observer pattern. And if some error happened here, there is some error because of you know something maybe could be anything. There is no way to propagate. There is no way for the source to propagate the error to the subscribers. So reactive programming fixes this gap. It bridges this gap. Uh, iterator pattern. Uh, in this, what happens is there is a there is a list of items or objects or values, right? And you want to there is a there is a consumer who wants to consume the values. So, iterator pattern allows us to iterate over the entire list of items uh, sequentially without worrying about the uh, the actual data structure that is used. It could be an array or an array list, could be a file or tree or it could be anything. So. Uh, it's a, uh, because, because it's an abstraction, so the Hoover is consuming it, it will just say, do you have any more values? If yes, okay, just give me the next value. And you can consume the entire data. You can iterate over this data. And functional support. So this, uh, this, uh, this is one thing that is missing from Java. Uh, Java 7 had like very limited support, right? Java 8 has some support. There are lambdas and uh, method references. So what happens is uh, yeah, there is an iterable, right? Like, that, like there is an error list. So you want to iterate over it. We can iterate. So now if you combine these two, observer pattern tells you that uh, maybe I right now I don't have all the data. I may have some data in the future, right? An iterator pattern using this, what we can do is you have a list of data already available. There's no future here. And you can iterate over the items. So you combine this, data will be coming 
uh, you know, with time, and you can operate. You can you can uh, you can use some functional operators on this data. So, uh, functional programming. I mean, uh, if you don't know about it, right? So you you should probably see this functional programming thing. Uh, it's a uh, if you see it, the look at the model languages like Kotlin and Swift and uh, any model language for that matter, right? So they all have functional support, some sort of functional support. And since Java 8 also introduced functional support. Excuse me. Reactive extension is a library for composing asynchronous events. So if you want to know about, you know, who came up with reactive programming and all, maybe you can look it up. I don't have it in my slides. Uh, but yeah, Microsoft came up with reactive programming and uh, Eric Meyer from Microsoft. Uh, for, uh, this is a reactive extension, is a library for composing uh, asynchronous and events based programming programs using observable sequence. So let's uh, see some of the big words here. So there are a few big words like asynchronous, event based, and observable. So asynchronous, we already know what is this. Event based, it performs some operations when the event is triggered, or you know, based on based on some uh, based on some event, you can perform some operation. And observable, so you can think of it as asynchronous immutable array. Asynchronous because in an array, it's uh, the all the values of the array is not here completely. Uh, the values will come with time. Uh, so asynchronous and immutable because you cannot change it. Uh, not exactly array, it could be list also. Or it could be a single item also. So reactive extension, it's available for, okay, you can see for yourself, right? You pick the language, it's, it's available there. From React, from you know, C Sharp, Unity, Java, any Kotlin fans here? Kotlin? Oh, come on, you should start using Kotlin, man. Uh, Swift, JavaScript, Scala, Python, Clojure, C++, Groovy, Go language. So you name it, reactive extension is there. It's still, I mean, a lot of active development is still going on, so uh, we can expect uh, support for more languages soon. So yeah, there's no Android here, right? <laughs> there's no Android, where's the Android here? There's no Android. So we use Rx Java and uh, Kotlin. If you are uh, Kotlin with Rx Java to to implement reactive programming in Android. So Rx Java is a JVM implementation of ReactiveX, and Rx provide Rx Android it provides whatever is missing from Rx Java, the Android specific things. So we can use it with uh, Android de app development. So from the official documentation, what it says is, you know, you include you include Rx Android in your Gradle dependency with the Rx Java. Yeah, please come. With RX Java, so because you know RX Android releases are very few, and uh, RX Java releases are quite a lot, and there are some bug fixes and also you should use both of these together if you want uh, to use uh, reactive programming in Android. Uh, there are a lot of big names about you know uh, who's using uh, RX. Okay, so let's see some of the components of uh, reactive programming. So there are basically three three major components of reactive programming. One is source, of course, something that emits data, <coughs> and uh, you know this data it can be passed around between threads or it can be consumed directly. And there is a subscriber. Subscriber uh, is the one who consumes the data that is emitted from the source. And there is a scheduler. So these are the three S of reactive programming. Uh, scheduler. Uh, it, it deals with threats and concurrency, <laughs> and it tells us you know where to process and uh, consume the data. So yeah, these three are the major components. Um, I mean, if you look at it once in one go, like it looks complex, so we'll break it down. But basically, <coughs> there, is, there is a scheduler, there is a source, and there is a subscriber. So let's break it down. So source, source will get some data from somewhere. It could be from network, database, files, it could, it, could be, it could be any operation. It could be user touch event or a drag event, XY coordinates. Um, it could be from anywhere. So we'll not worry about where the data is coming from right now. And this is the timeline. And source, what it does is it emits the data. 
and uh, you remember in observer pattern when I was talking about there are two gaps in uh, observer pattern, right? Uh, observer has uh, not observer. I mean, observable or source has no way of telling uh, the subscriber that okay, I am exhausted. I don't have any more data. So it's there. So if there is an error uh, or uh, you know the data is exhausted, the observable or the source can inform all the subscriber. Okay, I don't have any more data. So maybe you know you can do on some other processing. And these are called exactly once. When some error happens, it will not call on next after that. When on complete happens, it will not call on next after that. On next is how we pass the data. So here we are assuming the data is some integers, uh, one, two, three, right? So, okay, now it just doesn't just emit the data. It depends on the type of uh, source or observable we're creating. But the idea is there's a subscriber. So subscriber, what it does is um, it will subscribe first. It will subscribe to the source, okay, and ready to receive data. And after subscription, whenever this uh, source emits the data, observer receives it. An observer can also update the UI or local DB. So this is a this is a different thing. Based on uh, the data, the observer can uh, the observer can perform some operations. And when uh, and when the let's say a subscriber doesn't want any more data, it could be in between. It could be at any point of time, right? In any point of this timeline. So when the sub subscriber doesn't want any more data, subscriber can say, okay, dispose. So in RS Java, or probably I think you have used, somebody has used RS Java. So in RS Java, one this was unsubscribe. So this was subscription uh, interface. So that's been changed to dispose in RS Java too. So dispose means this is a way to, uh, you know, cancel the operation. So let's say there is an observable which, which is doing some network request, takes 10 seconds, returns me some data, and meanwhile, uh, you know, I close the activity. User closes the activity in one of the slides that we saw, right? So, user closes the activity. This operation is going on, right? So, what we can do is we can call dispose, and the operation gets cancelled. So, we get <coughs> some extra resources to use, right? And how scheduler fits here is, oh yeah, before that, this adds one level of abstraction, right? Because this guy, the subscriber, doesn't care where the data is coming from. It's just getting a sequence of data from observable. And now, where this guy gets it from is where we actually, you know, we need to deal with databases or REST APIs or remote databases. Now, where scheduler fits in this picture, uh, let's see about that. So, scheduler is what it does is, you know, it uh, it parameterizes concurrency. So, how many of you have done this? Just raise the hand if you've done this. Okay. Everybody has done this, right? So, uh, uh, if you have used Kotlin, okay, I know most of you have not used the Kotlin. But if you've used Kotlin, so there are things like uh, coroutines. There are coroutines, right, which helps you, which are basically, you know, uh, cheaper threads, which uh, which we are in full control of, unlike actual threads which <coughs> OS controls. Uh, if you have done uh, iOS development, so there is something called GCD there, uh, Grand Central Dispatch. It, it allows you to... You know, it, ab it abstracts the concept of low-level threading and it allows you to perform asynchronous non-blocking IO operations in a very simple way, in a very simple way. Is anyone aware of any threading libraries in Java or in Android that we use? I don't know, I'm not aware. It's probably there, but I'm not aware of it. So here, you know, uh, the modern programming languages, if you see, each uh, of these programming languages, they have some sort of support for handling low-level threading. So you don't have to deal with creating threads and dealing with this. Thread management and synchronization, I mean, uh, uh, what can I say? I'm allergic to it, actually, seriously. So uh, pretty soon in like meetups like this, people will be saying uh, cavemen used to do thread equal to new thread. Because now there are some sort of wrapper available everywhere in all the modern programming languages. Right? So schedulers uh, is what allows us to do this. It allows us to deal with threading, concurrency, um, synchronization, concurrent data structure. Oh, yeah. That was out of time, maybe. <laughs> so you can affect away these things. So it's uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't have to deal with synchronization. This is one big part of uh, when you write apps or, you know, for, uh, or applications for that matter of that, right? 
we don't have to deal with threading or synchronization or thread safety or concurrent data structure. Uh, Rx Java with, uh, will help you with this. Now, Rx Java is not magic, you know. It was not created by Dumbledore. So, <laughs> if you use it, it's not like, you know, your app will magically become great, you know. So, you have to learn it. There's some steep learning curve, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, but if you use it, uh, if you use it properly, you will see more happy users. And all you need to do is it provides some uh, factory methods. So if you want to do some I/O operation, you can call schedulers.io.computation for if you have some computation-related task. If you have to create a new thread anyway, you can just call new thread. Or if you want to, uh, you know, uh, you want control over how many number of threads that gets created. It is optimized, by the way, for the uh, based on the device and the number of ports available. <coughs> but if you want to control over it, you can create your own executor. Uh, thread pooling if you have done. Uh, you can create your own executor and you can create schedulers from there. Now schedulers, so it fits there. So we can decide where it's getting the data from. If it's getting data from network, it should probably be in this IO thread because uh, it's a blocking operation and we don't want to block it. And we are updating the UI, they should happen in the main thread. Right? We cannot, because we cannot update from the background thread. So these are the three main components of uh, reactive programming. Uh, yeah. Can we not do this with the help of event buses? Yeah, we can. So event buses are there. Event buses will not do with scheduling. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I have this questions after some slides. Lots of boilerplate. Yeah, a lot of boilerplate there, and you have to deal with uh, a lot of things there. So we'll see. Yeah. So RX Java 2, there are some core types. So you know, these are generic terms like source and uh, subscriber and scheduler. So we'll see RX Java specific types. So these are some of the RX Java specific types. There is observer, which uh, observes the data. Uh, for creating source, there are this, there are disposable source and these are like some of the main types. This is not all. Uh, once you start dealing with RX Java, uh, there, there will be, uh, there are more types that you can use. So we'll see what each of these are. Uh, observer is something that, uh, you know, the subscriber, the, the third S, the second S, the subscriber, it receives data in the on next callback, in the on error callback, uh, in the on completed, if the, uh, if the source is absorption data, it will call on completed. And it gives you a disposable. So this disposable you can use to, you know, cancel the flow. And or to know that if somebody is still subscribed or not. Uh, uh, this is X source because you know uh, there are uh, various types of sources in uh, RX Java. There, there is observable, there is single, there is flowable. So this actually this X you can replace with this will become observable source or flowable source or single source. So I've just what whatever is written here is only for uh, observable source or so multi-valued reactive abstract class. It could, it could have multi values and uh, it can it, it can, it will emit the values in a uh, or an orderly fashion in the on next call of this which is received in on next call of this so what it does is uh, you can create this you can, if you want to create from scratch you want to decide what's going to happen you can use this and there is a uh, it takes a parameter when you try to create it using factory method create it takes a parameter which is uh, observable on subscribe for observer, ob observable, single on subscribe for single, or flowable on subscribe for flowable, which has uh, this on subscribe parameter and it gives you uh, an object of, uh, of an emitter. So, where we are con full, we are in full control of when we'll call on next or on complete, or if some error happens, we'll call on error. We are full in full control of that using this. So apart from this, there are many factory methods, we will see some of them soon. And then there is disposable, it has like uh, these two main methods, is disposed or disposed. So before, uh, you know, sending some data, it's probably a good idea to see if it's disposed, the subscriber is disposed. So using this, you can unsubscribe from the source and cancel if any, on any, any, any flow that is in progress. Consumer, consumer is, uh, you know, functional interface that accepts a single value. So, for side effects like do or next, that we'll see later, or error. So things like that. So, 
uh, in their consumer is used. It will just say it will just take one generic value. So this is x emitter, so it could be like observable emitter for observable, flowable emitter for flowable. And using emitter, we can call on next. These methods are, methods are available for us. So we can pass, we can decide which value to pass. We can decide when to throw error, what is my error condition, and when the say all the data is done on complete. The transformer is the interface for composing sources. I'll show you a great example of transformers in one of the samples that I created. It has, you can see like, it will take one parameter, it will take observable of one type, observable T, it will convert it into observable R, a different type of uh, observable. And there are then schedulers, we have already seen this, parameterized concurrency. Uh, this is some advanced directive concept subject, so this is something that can act as both uh, an observable as a subscriber and a source, an observable and a, uh, an observable and a uh, observer. So, uh, we will not be covering this, but if you have any questions, maybe we can ask after the session. So, you have to use it with caution. So, if you see this, uh, the source code for this subject class, right? The subject class, it extends from observable abstract class and it implements the subscriber interface, the observer interface. So, it can access both. And if you use this uh, properly, uh, it can ease out like some of the pain in your application. But yeah, most of the times what happens is you don't have to worry about uh, uh, you don't have to worry about subject <coughs> and all right. If you want to just start using our Java and Android application, you know, just look at this first two three types and you're good to go. You can start. And by the way, that is the best way to learn RX Java. You know, I actually when I started it, I was going through the theories and uh, I looked at I don't know like fifty blogs and some videos, Jake Cotton videos and uh, other videos that had uh, less than 20 views, I've seen that also. And then uh, I, once I started, I started learning this. I, I knew all the theory, but I did not know how to implement it. So once I started it, right, I got like, you know, I got uh, like this observable creation wrong like 20 times after that, I got a hang of it and now uh, I can use it. So uh, this source, we'll talk about like what are the some of the sources available in RxJava. See, uh, these are the sources available in RxJava. This is observable, which emits, you know, it can emit zero value or one value or n number of values, and it will finish with incomplete, or it could in, uh, emit infinite values also. And there is flowable, single, maybe, and completed. Observable, it emits zero to n items and it terminates with success or exception. So it's also possible that you know without emitting a single value, uh, there was an error and it will call it will terminate with exception. It's also possible. Flowable is exactly the same as observable, but it supports back pressure. Uh, this is uh, also uh, back pressure is also one of the advanced concepts. You'll probably not be using it, but uh, back pressure is something you know. When let's say there is a source which is uh, emitting data at an extremely rapid pace, and you cannot process the data as fast as the source is producing them. Like for example, a drag event, you have a paint application, like user is dragging, user is drawing something, a kitten name user is drawing. So there are too many x and y coordinates variables, and you want to, as soon as you get the data, you want to process it, then you want to update the canvas, right? So there is a lot of things going on here. So if you uh, are not able to handle this, if your uh, subscriber is not able to handle the data as fast as the source is emitting it, so back pressure helps there. So what it does is, uh, it will not solve the, actually the issue, but what it will do is, it will uh, it will defer the processing of some data to some point of time where, uh, it's, where it's actually suitable for it. So there are some back pressure strategies, like you can drop some data, you can use some buffer, you can improve the buffer size. So if you are dealing with some situation where uh, the data emission is too fast, you can use uh, Flowable. Uh, yeah, by the way, uh, another reason to use uh, reactive programming is uh, if you have, if you know about Ar Android architecture components, it's compatible with this, uh, observable and Flowable types. Single, as the name suggests, right, it's a, it emits a single item or an error, 
it has no completion indicator. So only success or failure. Maybe. Uh, in maybe, uh, maybe what uh, has, do you know about optionals? Like in Kotlin, there are malleable types. Right? You put a question mark at them, and uh, in Swift, there are optionals. It also has a question mark at the end. So what it says is, you know, uh, if, is, is some, if there is some variable which is an optional integer or an optional string, so it means it can contain a string. It can contain null also. It's a nullable type. It can, con can contain null or a string. When you think about maybe, is the same. It can contain null or the actual value, but not right now. We're talking about reactive here, right? So asynchronous, but not right now. Some point in the future. So you know you can describe it as reactive optional. It's a reactive form of optional. Right now, uh, we don't know if it contains a value or not. But in the future, it may contain a value or it may contain an error or null. And this is completable. We can use this type of source when all we want is, you know, just success or failure. We don't care about uh, the response type and all. And that time we can use completable. Any questions still here? Okay. So that was a lot to take in. Uh, there is more to come in. <laughs> okay. So I have one question now. Uh, what you were asking. Okay, so how many of you think this is true? This reactive programming or source and subscriber, it's just a slight extension of observer pattern, nothing more. Okay, come on, I said be honest. <laughs> so we have seen some things like scheduling is not there. So uh, we already know about a lot of things, right, uh, uh, which will help us in actual development of this. <clears throat> the real power actually comes with uh, reactive extensions where we have operators that can actually allows us to transform, combine, and manipulate and work with sequences of emitted items. That is where the real power comes and that we'll see uh, in some uh, in the coming slides. Now, how to create observables? Creating observables, there are some methods here to create observables. If you want full control, use create. Or if you, for testing purpose, right? This is excellent for testing purpose. If you're testing it, so let's say, uh, you know, you have some sort of observable that is getting data from the network and it's updating the UI. Now, if you want to test it, you don't want network dependency, right? So you can use this methods because essentially it's just, it's a, it's an observable of integer or observable of some type. So we can use, we can use operators like this to create uh, observables. Create observables from scratch. So where we will be uh, deciding when to call on next, when to call on error or on entry. Defer will actually it will create a fresh observable for each subscriber, and uh, it will defer the creation until the until at least one of the observer subscribes. And this uh, I don't know where you will use this probably just for testing purposes, but you know as the name suggests, this will create an observable that emits nothing but completes normally. <coughs> Never will create an optional, uh, not optional uh, observer, which emits nothing, but it will never terminate. An error is something you know which will turn it with an error. It will not fall on, on complete, it will fall on error. And uh, yeah, from its, uh, if you have say a list or uh, or you know any any list data structure, list sort of data structure, you can use from. So you can create observables from a list of items or from an array or from a flowable, from a different types you can create uh, the observable. Interval is, it just emits a sequence of integers in the specified uh, interval. It will not call on, on complete. So we've seen this, now these are some factory methods. The rest of the factory method, let's see that. So if you have just one value, right, um, let's say string s is equal to john. You can create an observable with just that one string. If You, you can just call observ observable dot just and you pass it. Um, I will show you in the demo some of these. Range when you want to create uh, a sequence of, uh, uh, I mean, a sequence of integers, a list of integers in a particular range. Say 1 to 120. Repeat, uh, it will repeat it, it will repeat the observables uh, for a particular number of times. 
this, I'm not sure if it's available in Rx, Java or not, but create an observable that returns a value from a function. Timer, it will, after some delay, it will, uh, it will emit the value of the observable. Now this is where things get interesting. Transforming observable. Okay, before this, um, uh, is anyone who's not aware of MVP pattern? Honestly, I mean, nobody is judging you, so okay, everybody is aware of Google. So, in MVP pattern, what happens is there is a view, there is a presenter, and there is data, uh, model model. So, it's called MVP, present, uh, MVP model. View interacts with the presenter, and this interacts with the data. And it present, the job of the presenter is to get the data and uh, update the view. And uh, what view does is, if there is some events happening here, it will pass it to presenter, and presenter will take some actions accordingly. So this interaction is not direct, it's actually they talk via interfaces, so it's uh, it's more abstract. So now, uh, I'll tell you, uh, in this, uh, I created one demo app, I'll show you. So what I wanted, what this demo app, what it does is, uh, it, it talks to some third parties, and it gets uh, images from, let's say, I have an account in Facebook, right? It will get my Facebook images or Flickr, it will get my Flickr images or there is imager.com site. So it will get the images from there and it will show all the images in, uh, in, in the single page. So now the problem is, uh, I have to get images from Flickr or uh, this or maybe Facebook. So now all of these, they have uh, different types of uh, structures. The the actual the image structure, the metadata for the image. This has some flicker, uh, uh, different structure. This has different structure. This has different structure. I don't want these structures to be propagated here. You know, because tomorrow if this API changes or Facebook changes uh, uh, the API, I don't want any changes to be here. I want this to remain independent of that. So as soon as the data comes in, so I got like a type of data. Let's say a list of A, list of B, list of C. I want to convert this into a list of, say, this is my type that I'm using it. I want to convert this list into this, and then I want to update it. So this is independent of this. Only this the model class is dealing with this, right? So now with this in uh, in mind, we can go ahead with this. So a lot of uh, Android developers, uh, what? They do is they think that model is you know just the Java model class. No, it's not just the model class, Pojo class. No, it's much more than that. It deals with uh, your entire data. You know where, the, where to get the data from, uh, local database or APIs. All the API calls, and everything is included here. And if you're using properly using MVP, uh, there should be no Android dependent component here. No context, uh, no Android dependent component here. So it eases up the testing. So. Why people are using MVP pattern is because you know you want to test the view. You can mark, you can mock this part. You can mock this part, and you can test it easily. You want to test, you want to mock this. You can mock the model. You can test the presenter and view. Okay, so now let's see this. These are transformation operators. It will transform the type of data. It will transform the, uh, you know, the the observable itself. So buffer, flat map, group by, map, scan, window, there's more. Uh, okay, there's one more merge I have not written here. So there's more, you can you can see, uh, you can read about it. And by the way, there is uh, reactivex.io is a great source for reading all this. Uh, its documentation is great. So buffer, what it does is, this is the timeline. This is the timeline of the input observable. This is the timeline of the output observable. And what buffer does is, if I specify a buffer size of 3, in this example, I've specified the buffer size of 3. So now, the observable that is the output, right, it will give you a list of items when the buffer is full. So first item received, it will not emit anything. Second item received, it will not emit anything. Third item received, now the buffer is full. Now it will emit a list of these three items. The same goes on. So, and one more thing here, whenever you see this dash, this dash, Right, this is the on-complete event, and you see when you see a cross, that's a on-error event. 
and these are uh, taken from RX Marbles. Another good site for uh, learning reactive by this via this colorful diagram. So this is um, this is buffer. So you can uh, you know one one great example I can think of with buffer is uh, yeah for this. Now this contains. Well, this contains 50 uh, images, this contains 70, this contains 20, we don't know how many. Could be like this, sort of 120 images. Now, uh, these 120 images, right, we don't want to load everything here. We, don't, we, want to, we want to apply pagination. So, I'll use a buffer, sorry, I'll use a buffer with, let's say, pagination of, uh, with a buffer size of 10. So, you receive 10 images, you give it to me. You receive 10 images, then you give it to me. You can do that. Flat map. What it does is uh, it will map to each item of the input observable and it will create an observable out of each input item. And uh, so there are, let's say, if there are 20 items, there will be 20 observables. And then it will flatten it. It will, it will take all the values and it will convert into one observable and it will. Uh, emit the values accordingly. So the output, the resultant output is just one observable. This example I, can, I will show you in uh, group by, group by is when you just want to group the observables. So flat map, I will show you the example later. Group by, we can think of it as, uh, you know, um, there is a, there is an institution, there is a college. Now a college has housekeeping staff. Professors, deans, registrar, registrar staff, students, a lot of people, right? So now let's say we are getting uh, the details of all these people and we want to just, you know, group it. So we want to say if it's student, put it in student group. If it's a uh, uh, registrar or dean or professor, put it in professor group. Then we can create group and so what group I will do is it will give you this. It will group the uh, emitted items and you can use these emitted items. Map, it's it's easy. This is uh, one of the higher order functions. It will apply some sort of transformation uh, in the input observable, and then after applying the transformation, uh, it will emit those items. Has anybody has anyone used maps in Kotlin? JavaScript. In JavaScript, in Swift, right? So you can do that, but you you do it with iterables, the static types, are not the static, the synchronous types. With, we can do map with asynchronous types also. Scan, what it does is, it successively, uh, it gives you the successive value. So now it emits one, it will emit one. It emits two, input observable emits two. So it will add these two, one plus two is three, it will emit three. Next is three, it will, three plus three is six. Six plus four is 10. 10 plus five is 15. It will emit successively for each value. In some cases it can be very helpful. There is window. What window does is, uh, does it look similar to buffer? It's creating a batches of three and it's emitting it. It's actually very similar to buffer. The only difference is buffer, if you see, it's also creating a batches of three based on the buffer size. And it's emitting, it, it emits a list of values. It will be a list of string, uh, integer, or uh, any data type for that matter. And uh, this window, it will emit actual observables. So when you do this, you input one observable, you can output like um, n number of observables. So now that uh, since we have, now we know that our asynchronous programming, we know about how to create the observables, the source, and we know about how to, you know, transform the operators. Sometimes what happens, you want to filter it also. And uh, these are like different use cases. So filtering operators, there are many. This should not take long because the names are self-explanatory here. So you can filter the values emitted by an observable. Observable. So distinct will, of course, it will give you distinct values. So there are two twos, it will emit one two. There are this one that was emitted earlier, it will not emit the one. Three is distinct, it will distinct the, it will emit the distinct values. So <coughs> this is also in a way, if you see, this is not actually transforming the observable. It is just filtering out some of the data. Element add, it will give you one observable, whichever is the position, past position, and it will call on complete. You see this dash, that's on complete. 
filter based on some condition, the condition here is greater than 10, so it will only emit greater than 10 values. You can filter it out, you can take the first value, you can take the last value, you can skip some initial values if you want. If you want to take some, uh, just some first, uh, let's say n values, you can say, you can say, you can uh, write this, you can use take. It will take uh, just, you know, the specified number of values that you call on complete. Take last from last. Just, uh, I mean, it will take this last value. If you pass 1, if you pass 20, it will take last 20 values. This, uh, this, if you think about practical purposes of uh, reactor programming, right, this, uh, the, I mean, you will be using this a lot of times. So, th there will be things like, uh, I have some, uh, that's a, this example, right, there are photos, I, the user opens the app, I want to show photos. So now, I could have one observable, I could have one observable that is a reading from my local database. I could have another observable that is getting the photos from the actual uh, APIs. There could be two observables. Now we want to use this uh, more than one observable in conjunction with each other. So now these are the combining observables, you know, uh, I mean, uh, this, this, these are the ways to combine observables. These are the operators that helps us in combining uh, observables. So combine latest, what it will do is, it will take the latest from the observable 1 and the latest from observable 2 and it will emit the combined value based on the, I mean, based on the condition you written. It could be if x is greater than y or, I mean, any condition if you written. So now when 1 was emitted, there was no value emitted from the second observable. So it, it will not emit 1. So as soon as it got this, it will combine these two based on x plus y, 1a it will write, 1a it will emit. Now when 2 comes, what is the latest of? Uh, observable B A because B has not been emitted yet, it's uh, at the later point of time. So it will combine with this, it will emit this. So similarly to B, when C comes, the latest one is 2 from observable 1. So let's say 2C, 2D, when 3 comes, the latest here is D. So 3D, 4D, 5D because there is nothing after D here. So you can combine multiple observables also. You can start with, so this start with is, uh, you know, you can start with a single value or start with an array or start with another observable, you can, uh, I mean, you, you can use all these things with start with. There is zip, what it does is it combines end to end thing. Uh, end to end means, you know, first value from here, first value from here, combine it. First value from observable 1, first value from, second value from observable 2, it will combine it. I mean, you know, nth value from observable 1, nth value from observable 2, it will combine it. So, first value is 1a, second 2b, C got emitted a lot earlier than 3, but since these are the third items, it will emit 3C, 4D. For fifth, there is no match, it will not emit, uh, it will not emit fifth. Concat is when you want to uh, you know, uh, emit all the values of observable 1. You want to emit all the values of observable 1, and once that is finished, you want to emit the values of observable 2. So, C111, one, 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 when this got finished, it will emit the second observable, and it will uh, uh, it will call on complete. It will not call on complete in between because once on complete gets called, uh, it's essentially the end of the observable sequences. Right? Merge, it will emit as you can see, right? As and when uh, there is an emission happens, it will emit that directly. <coughs> so, I'm, uh, a good thing of with all of this. Uh, uh, observable is uh, all of these operators is you know they they essentially they they return the same type of observable same or similar type of observable based on you know if you're performing transformational it will it will return a different types of uh, different type of observable so you can change these operators you can change these operators easily so now yeah think of it as like uh, different uh, observables there is one observable which emits apple, another emits oranges, third emits bananas, and fourth emits uh, strawberries. Now I can call merge operator. You've seen this merge, right? This is the merge operator. So now I can call this merge operator. So as soon as any emission happens in any of these, it will emit that item. So now it will merge all this into a single observable, which is emitting all types of fruits now. Apple, oranges, bananas, and strawberries. Now map, map is, uh, it's like, you know, you are not happy with the data. 
you got the data, but you're not happy with the data. So you want to transform the data. Okay, I, so I'm sorry that, that came out wrong. You know, data is not about happiness. You want to say massage the data, right? You want to change the data in the way you want. So, well, actually data is happiness, right? Data is happiness, I think so. So uh, you want to convert the data from one input type to another type. And uh, yeah, math helps you do that. It will perform certain operation in all the uh, items emitted by some observable. So, and filter, you know, I don't like strawberries, so it's filtered out strawberry. So this is filter, we are filtering out items. You've already seen this, I'm just showing you how to, how to combine these operations, how to change these operations. So now, uh, once you get this, oh yeah, this is the previous one, you got filter. Uh, filter we already seen, and then we can reduce it. Reduce, uh, I've not shown you in the slides, but what it does is, uh, it takes in, a list of values and it will emit essentially just one value and uh, that one value since we're talking about reactive that one value will be uh, it will be uh, a maybe it will be a maybe because right now we don't have any value but we may have some value in the future so now you reduce it in the way you want right? so uh, you get what fruit salad there's an old saying right if life gives you observable of fruits, create fruit salad. So, initially, like uh, if you have two different type of observables, it will not allow you to merge it. Or you can actually, you know, you can do what you can apply map or you can you can compose you can uh, with a with map you can actually transform the type of observable right? transform it in the similar type and then you can merge it or you can use the object class in java <laughs> okay so we will see retrofit later i have time for some demos So buffer I want to show first. So what it does is, uh, the, I'll show you the code. So now it is, there is a buffer of size 5. Can you all see this or should I increase the font? I think I increase the font. Yeah. Okay, so there is a buffer size of five. So the emission is happening one, two, three, four, five, but it's emitting the value only after the buffer is full. In the batch is a five, and in the last example, if you see, the the batch is not complete yet. The five limit has not reached yet, but it is emitting this because on complete got called. So let's see this. Yeah, so it is emitting. If you see, I'm using so whatever we just read, right, from creational to combining observables to. Uh, yeah, you know, transforming it, filtering it, this will, I mean, uh, this is a demo for all that. So it's a uh, form array, it's creating an observable from an, a list of, from an uh, array of integers. And uh, yeah, there's a buffer here. So buffer we've added, so this is transforming this observable. And uh, do one next, these are, uh, uh, what I'm doing is whenever this is received, so this integer, this is essentially a list of integers. If some of these code look like uh, non-Java code to you, that's because it uses lambda functions and uh, it uses lambdas and method references uh, of Java 8. So it just you know makes the code more concise. That's it. Uh, on complete, we've not written here. Here. 
on next uh, this i wanted to test like you know uh, you, there is a subscribe happening here okay so from the start i'll show you there is an observable list of integers okay this is a source we are creating this is the source now we have decided which values will be emitted in batches of what because we are using buffer so now here we are subscribing on yeah this is schedulers this i didn't show you schedulers.io so this will perform uh, the operations in the background thread in io thread and then what we are doing is in on next whenever it calls on next i'm just printing it out it's a list of integers i'm printing out the integers and here what is happening is we are calling actually calling subscribe and we are passing the observer here so this is the on complete here and it's up to you actually you know you want to use on complete here you can call it here yeah you can call it here so i have not called it here and uh, Yeah, see, there's no incomplete. There's no incomplete printed anywhere because we have not used incomplete. But if we essentially if we do this, uh, do incomplete. So it will it will print buffer, buffer complete. I don't know if you can see or not. Excuse me. So on complete, you can write with subscriber, with the uh, observer here, or when you call the subscribe method, if you see this returns. Okay, this, this doesn't return anything. So void. So you get a disposable in on subscribe. But if you are calling uh, on subscribe with a consumer, it will return you a disposable. So you can use the disposable. And in the buffer, essentially, you can do you can write on complete operation here, or with observer if you are using this interface has an on complete here. When some error happens, it will give you a callback here. So this is a buffer. Uh, what else? Uh, there is one more thing that I uh, failed to mention that is uh, observers, observables or sources, there are two types. There is hot observables, there is cold observables. So what cold observables do is they will uh, start emitting the value as soon as there is at least one subscriber. One guy subscribe, it will start emitting the value. Second guy subscribe, it gets the values. Hot observable is, um, you know, it doesn't care. It doesn't care if anybody is listening or not, it's still shouting, it will, it will still shout. Uh, it will keep emitting the values. So let me show you the hot observable demo. Uh, no. So it's this is the first observable. It's for printing four five seven eight. And the second observable comes into the picture, it's print, it starts printing after some point of time. So you can see the first, uh, first observable, you know, uh, it is printing after, uh, it is printing first some values because it subscribed earlier. And the second observable, when it subscribed, it started receiving values after some time. Yeah, so I'm using interval here to create the observable. So interval in a period of uh, half millisecond, half second, 500 millisecond. And uh, yeah, well, as then when you call connect, it will start emitting values. So it doesn't matter. This is a basically a publisher. Uh, so what happens is as and when you call connect, it will start emitting the values. So it doesn't matter if you subscribe earlier or later at what point of time. When you call uh, uh, connect, it will start emitting the values. And uh, where is subscription happening? Yeah, here. So this is the first uh, subscriber. I'm just calling subscribe on this. Do on next and subscribe. Right. So this is the first subscriber. And after a wait period of two seconds, there is a second subscriber. So if you look at this, and there is an initial wait. I guess yeah, initial wait of two seconds. So for two seconds, since it's a half second uh, emission. So the values uh, and it called connect. So initial four values it will emit right in the first two seconds, 
these are not captured anywhere <coughs> but a subscriber comes into picture after 4 seconds so 0 1 2 3 4 happen uh, 0 1 2 3 happen on 4 onwards this guy got subscribed and it started receiving values after the next 2 seconds this guy got subscribed and started receiving the values so this is a uh, hot observable next let's see map filter reduce yeah the hot observable Hot observable, okay. Uh, can, yeah. you, can you write do next instead of subscribe directly into observer after the connect? After the connect? Yes, because uh, do on next, there is a two left, uh, on next and do on next. There is, uh, do on next is actually on next. Yeah, but uh, it will uh, emit first and after the on next will be emitted. No, no, on, on next is, uh, you know, on next is for emitters. Emitter will call on next. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the value that is passed in on next is received in do on next. Or if you're writing observer or uh, yeah observer interface, if you're dealing with there is on next there. There's a method itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, map filter reduce. Let's see what this does. So by default they are cold or hot? By default they're cold. Yeah. So it is. It emitted some values. And it called on complete, and we are reducing it. So uh, reduce function is you know just add the values. So six plus three nine nine plus nine is eighteen. Uh, okay. So now this is observable. We're using the dot range operator to create the observable. In this, what happens is uh, it's creating an observable from one till twenty. The count is twenty, right? So now this observable. It contains uh, integers from 1 to 20. Now here, if you see, subscribe on schedules of computation. So do this in the background thread, in the computation thread. And then I'm mapping it integer with 3. So this is another function. So it is what it will do is, it will multiply uh, 3 with all the items of the uh, source. So we after this, we have uh, like a table of 3, right? We'll have 3, 6, 9, uh, multiples of 3 till 60 because 20 into 3 is 60. So this is map and then I'm filtering it after map is done. So after multiplication of 3 is done, I'm filtering it. So just filter it out and give me everything that is less than 10. And uh, yeah, this is a subscription is happening when the next value is received. I'm printing the value. When on complete is received, I'm just printing complete. And this is a reducer function. What it does is it takes two values and it's adding the value. So if there are like 20 values, you know, it will give you uh, it will keep adding it. This is how you write a reducer function, by the way. And uh, on the success of the reducer function, if you see this reduce, right? Uh, yeah, see, it returns maybe. It will not return an observable, it returns maybe. Because it, it, has, it essentially, uh, it will just emit one value. And the reactive optional that we know of is maybe. <coughs> and in the, when this on reduce, uh, you know, this maybe succeeds. What we're doing is we're just printing, printing the reduced value. So now if you look at this, this will make some sense. So now we had 1 to 20, multiplied 3 with all the integers. So it became 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Now I filtered it with everything less than 10. So it gave me 3, 6, 9. And the reducer, what it's doing is, it's adding it up and it's giving me 18. So and if you look at this thing, I mean, uh, this is, you know, this increases readability. This is awesome. I mean, I, I can read this code in one go and I can understand what it's doing. Do something on the computation thread. Do what? Uh, in the source we have, multiply, uh, convert it, transform it uh, by multiplying uh, 3. Then filter it. Then I can call reduce right here. So I can change it. So it increases readability like anything. So that was my filter to reduce. Uh, scan is again it's simple it will just uh, you know give you successive values so 10 10 plus 20 is 30 30 plus 30 is 60 60 plus 40 is 100 100 plus 50 is uh, 150 yeah so it has uh, initially the source is an uh, observable that has 1 to 5 I'm using a just operator here. 
This is very handy when creating observables. And then mapping it, multiplying it by 10. So 1 to 5 became 10 to 50. And then in the scan function, I'm passing it x plus y. So you know, add all the values. Add successive, it add the values, and in the on next, it will call successive, the successive values it will call. So now 10, it will initially it will input, uh, it will emit 10, then 10 plus 20 is 30. Uh, again, the same thing. And then you subscribe on it. Again, just subscribe. If you see, this returns a disposable object. So. If I write this, where is the x? And let's say for some reason I don't want to use it, I can just call this dispose. So it will cancel the operation in between. Take, take last or quite similar let's say zip if you want to see any of these just let me know i'll execute that zip uh, it combines two or uh, i mean two observables right? yes same thing uh, i mean as we saw in the slides so there are two observables you were saying different types right there are two observables. One is integers. If you see this, yeah, this is observable of integers. This is observable of source B is observable of string. And the resultant source I want to convert into string. So uh, what we have done here is, yeah, so zip source A with source B. And what is the function to zip it? Integer plus S. So string plus integer will give you strings. So now this come into source and uh, again the same thing. Uh, the similar things on next on complete on subscribe I mean subscribe and uh, this is how the zip is happening error error no with filter is you, you can specify a condition so every item will pass to that condition and if the if the output of this condition uh, is true it will take that uh, Item, otherwise, it will reject the item. Like you, the prime you can put a condition, you can, you can put a prime number condition there. Yeah. Skip, skip will actually will skip some items, so, skip you know, first five or something. Uh, in the error, I'll show you the code. Let's run this first. So, it emitted some items and then it will call it called error. And there are uh, actually, you know, uh, one of the Awesome things about reactive programming is its resilience. It's uh, is its ability to handle the error. So now let's see what is happening here. Because you know, if you remember in the slides, I told that you know, either it will call on complete or on error. It won't call both simultaneously. But see, here error is happening. I mean, this is just a string, but your minus one means error. Some error happened, and then it's calling on complete also. So there are some strategies that you can use to deal with error. Yeah, so there are three observables. One contains one, two, three, four. And if you remember, there is empty, never, and error. So I use observable.error to create an observable that will emit an error. That will end in an error. And then, and then there is another observable, 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, then I'm using concat. Concat, if you remember, it's like uh, it will append all the observables in a sequential way. So one observable, till on complete, then second observable. Till on complete, then third observable. I mean, it takes only two parameters. It's one, one parameter, so uh, I've chained it here. So now this source, it should emit one, two, three, four, and then exception. And after, since exception happened, it should never print out five, six, seven, eight, because it's never going till there. So here I'm subscribing it, and here, on error return item, there's another function. I can return this. And when on complete happens, just call on complete. In on next, you know, uh, just print the integer. Okay, I'll just write it. <coughs> yeah, so one, two, three, four got printed. And on uh, uh, there is a function called on error return item. So when error happened, you know, I don't want it to crash. It will return minus one and it will 
complete successfully. It will call on complete. The items after the error are not called. If I remove this thing, yeah, it crashed because we are not handling the error. It will say that uh, where is it? On error not implemented exception. But yeah, before that it was working fine. This is the error demo. Yeah. So what is so we have to speak of one to three four and then error and then five six seven. So error happened after four. But uh, I want to still execute five six seven. So is there any way? No. So you can do some other things like you know you have to create another obs observable. So this error could happen, you know, uh, if the error is in the stream, you cannot mm -hmm. what is the point? If it's if it's in the stream, if it's always giving you error. So the problem is uh, uh, here we are using uh, this error, right? We are using this error. So every time there will be an error. There are methods to retry. There is a there are methods to retry actually. You know, uh, error handling I have not included in the slides, but there is error handling. So basically, what it does is there are two methods: uh, retry and uh, one more. I forgot the name. So what it does is it will resubscribe. Try to resubscribe with the observer. It will try to resubscribe, and uh, it will again get the values. And again, if there is error, it will again resubscribe. So, so here, uh, our observable is not crashed. Our subscribe is crashed. Observable. Observable. We continue its, its work. No. Observable, it's not working, right? It's called on error. So, observable ended there. Uh, any one question you have, right? Uh, this is for, uh, my question is actually similar to this only. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my case, supposing I have, uh, uh, I need to update like a list of users, right? And one user failed with uh, some error. And I still want to execute the rest of it. Like, I still want to send that to my backend. How mm -hmm. do I uh, go ahead with that? No, see, this is a different question because we are talking about updating the user, <coughs> and what we are showing is, you know, getting a list of users. No, so I'll get it. Like, suppose I'm doing from it Yeah. I have like a list of users, and I want to keep sending that. So I'm using the network it, and it's returning an observable for each network call. Okay. So uh, after that, so one of them crashes with an error. Like, suppose it times out. Time, time out time. exception. Okay. After that, I want to continue pushing at least the next one. So yeah, nobody is starting, uh, stopping you from pushing the elements, right? So you are pushing, you are saying, let's say four items, four users got pushed. Huh. When while pushing the while pushing the fifth user, there is some error, huh. right? So then you can retry. Then I come back. Then I go on error, right? And then from there I can't go back to the next one. You can the you can try and resubscribe. You can try and resubscribe. Error handling I have not included in the slides, but there are uh, there is uh, some error handling here. Uh, let me show you. Just one second. There is reactive manifesto. Uh, if you are not aware, this will this explains why do we need more reactive systems. So do have a look at it. Reactive manifesto dot org. So by default, if there is an error, it uh, disposes. Uh, the disposes the huh? It's disposing. Yeah. Uh, error handling, yeah, catch and retry. So there are these two operators are there. There is retry and catch. So what it does is this thing. Right? An error happens, you can resubscribe and you can still continue. So this is what a question for you. Yeah, but assuming that uh, that one will always that one user will always fail. So then I use uh, catch for what? Catch uh, is a little bit different from this. So what this tells you is, you know, uh, you're you're dealing with a list of items. Some error happened, and then you switch over to some other observable. When you switch over, you, you, this is, this does not continue from there. You switch over from a different list. Supposing that guy, this like that one guy always will get there. Oh yeah, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't like continue this. Uh, the from the next item somehow. No, so that that will actually, you know, uh, when you receive. 
things like if you have done some uh, error handling thing there, like if you have implemented try catch, right? So you can handle that gracefully, not abruptly. You can do that, and plus you'll since you're getting a callback in on uh, on error also. So from there you can there are some uh, backup strategies that you can use to switch it. Yeah, you're welcome. So this is error handling, which was not in the slides. Okay. Uh, retrofit with RX Java. So uh, you can use retrofit with RX Java. Uh, RX Java two. Uh, okay, in this slide, wherever you see RX Java, that means RX Java two by default. There is no RX Java one in there. So in retrofit, you have done this, right? So you create a something. It will give you a call object, and then you call uh, what is the method? Call dot nq. Right? You, uh, you you pass call, you call this method call dot nq. It will nq it. It will take care of background search and everything. And then once this is done, you get a callback. So again. The callback that you get with NQ, right? So, if you want to perform multiple operations one after the other, it will still become a callback help. And uh, as I mentioned, if the if there is a phone call, right? Uh, you have a, the user has your app open. Some phone calls comes in. Your app is in the background. The phone screen is in the top, right? Or when the user presses the back button. So at that time, there's no blockage of UI, but still, uh, since we are holding a reference to something from the activity that got destroyed. You can get like window token exception, or it will definitely end an exception unless you uh, perform checking like uh, if the activity is destroyed or not. So this is the pure retrofit uh, thing. Right? We can use RS Java two adapter with retrofit. There is a RS Java two adapter with retrofit, and while creating the retrofit builder, right, you just add the call adapter factory for the RS Java. RS Java two call adapter factory. You just add it, and after this, you can use you can convert this into this. So I mean, it's it's becomes very easy to use retrofit. So after that, you don't have to uh, you know call NQ and all because once you subscribe with it, so you don't have to call fetch user elements all the time. Also, you get the observable item. You subscribe as soon as you subscribe, you start getting the items. So this is another thing I took from uh, the JQuote install. Uh, it was in April 2017. So now, what happens is in Android development, uh, we write code to you know to deal with uh, to deal with remote APIs, to deal with remote databases, with local databases, with the UI, and uh, that Android logo is basically it represents the OS. So OS can also give you callback. You know, some phone call, some you know uh, phone uh, phone call is coming up, and your back your phone is going to is about to go in the background. So we have to we have we write code to deal with all this. So uh, usually what happens is you know I call uh, some API, give me the list of photos, and as soon as I get the call back, I update the local database. And when that is done, I update the UI. Okay, the response is received. Update the UI, and when uh, some some things happen like uh, 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 Android OS is giving me some signals, you know I have to deal with that also. So with reactive programming, based on what we have seen today, what we can do is we can write code that reacts to changes. So we can write code like this value changes your bit to UI. So now this responsibility uh, is removed from the code that we write. We can write, uh, we can update the UI based on the changes in the database. And user, user, user does something like you know set my name or update my username. You can do these both of these. Uh, <coughs> Reactively, when whenever there is an API call and the response comes, so it will update the local databases. You can write code like this, and yeah, this directly interacts with the UI. So the point is, like the code that we had written to manage all this is gone. Uh, don't think of it as you don't have to write code. <laughs> <laughs> it's like serverless architecture. You know, it's not like there are no servers. There are all core. There are servers. It's just that you don't have to deal with the complexities of managing it. Same here. It's not like there is no code. The code is always there. But you know, the, all we are doing with the code is you are just hooking these things, uh, components together. So let me show you one demo. One demo. I will show later.
uh, when you try and testing with RX Java, it provides test observer, subscriber, and scheduler. You can use this for testing. And it provides like uh, awesome methods when you want to assert with uh, a single value or multiple values or an observer. So testing becomes very easy with RX Java, and uh, you already know that your creating observer is so easy. You can just call observable, not observer, observable. You can call observable dot create to create manually, or observable dot just to you know just create observable that emits one value. There are so many factory methods that will help you. So I created this uh, sample app. The code is available on GitHub. Okay, has anyone used uh, Dagger? Dagger two. Okay, few people. So this code is basically uh, this sample app. Oh, sorry. Let me just put it the screen. Oh no, I cannot put it the screen. Whatever. I'm having some trouble projecting the screen, so I'll just do the demo in emulator. As soon as it is up, problem with the port, I guess. Okay, this will do, I guess. So, meanwhile, when starting, do you still think that it's just a slight extension of observer pattern? It is much more than that. Okay, it started. I don't know why it's everything black. So this is, uh, I just implemented this API. So this is getting photos from, uh, I created an account and I uploaded some photos. These are private, I think public photos also. Uh, public and private photos. And uh, from uh, this API, uh, from the imgeo.com. So here, if you glance at it once, right, you will see a couple of things. First, these are all albums. Second, uh, since it's public, right, so it will show you the total number of views on the albums. So this album has two views and five images. There's a friend's album. It has... Three views and uh, I think seven images. Okay, Avengers has got zero views, and uh, Game of Thrones two views. Oh, okay, cartoons it got three twenty views and seven images. So this uh, uh, this app I've created using uh, its MVP pattern. There are some still some loose ends, but you know if you please I mean if you want to check it out you can check it. Uh, it uses MVP pattern with retrofit and dagger. Uh, and reactive programming, of course. So as soon as the page is open, it will it will call this API. Uh, presenter will tell the model, you know, get me all the images from this. So basically, it's not get because it's push based, right? Uh, this is push based. It's not pull. You know, I'm not telling you give me the data. Push is happening because as soon as subscription is happened, the data will be pushed to presenter, and presenter will update the UI, so the view. So that is what is happening here. So now. Once I click on uh, any of these uh, albums, right, it will open that album and it will show me the images. So I've used some coordinated layer things here. And uh, yeah, so these, it will show me the images of uh, that particular album. That, that shield goes with Spidey costume, right? Very similar, right? Should not be with Captain America. And uh, yeah, there is a filter functionality here. Uh, so if you think of it, it is, there are 327 views. It is adding up all the views of each albums. 
and it is giving me total count right there on the top. It is adding up total images uh, in each album. It is giving me a image, total image count right here. So now what I've done is uh, I've used map filter reduce and other reactive things to create this. I'll show you the code in some time. And as soon as I start filtering, you can see the number of views and number of images got reduced based on the filters, whatever is available right now, based on this filtering. If I just say friends, okay, so there is uh, this criteria meets with friends and Game of Thrones. So three plus two, five views, and it has seven plus eight, 15 images. Uh, that's that's uh, almost right. There. And when I click back again, so this thing right at the top, this number of views, number of images, this is uh, reacting to some events. Uh, as soon as the filter is done, the observable gets to know that, okay, I need to filter something. And it filters uh, the number of albums I'm receiving. And based on that filter, it is doing some transformation with math. And then it's doing reduce. And after the reduce, it gives me one single value. And that single value is actually a single uh, Java object that contains two values total views and total images and I'm using that to update this. So uh, you see what's happening here, right? So it's uh, it's the system has become re reactive. Let me show you some code. So now uh, I'm going to ask you one question after I show you this code. Uh, that is readability question. How is the readability good, bad, or ugly? Uh, font size. Why it will be good? Okay. So here, uh, let me show you where the observable is coming from first of all. Uh, there is album observable and uh, I will see that later. Where is this coming from? Uh, yeah, it is coming from here. That means that data handler dot fetch albums. Yeah, this this is giving me the list of something called Pixie album. That is uh, that is the model that I use internally here. There is a model used here, and you know this gives me IMG or related uh, POJO. This gives me some other related POJO. This gives me something else. So I'm just transforming it into this type of observable that is the Pixie album and using that. So by the way, because uh, it's MVP and the logic is in the data layer, in the model layer, right? So uh, this is simple logic that if network is available, get it from the network. If network is not available, get it from the local database. I'm using uh, my object box uh, as a local database. It's still in beta, but yeah, it's good. It's worth checking out. So here, let's say network is available. So what we're doing is we're calling uh, the MJOR API and fetch user alums and it's you know passing some header and some user name and gives it gives me an observable of this user albums. Yeah, here. As I mentioned, since I'm using the RX Java 2 adapter, I can I can write observable here. So now based on some authorization and uh, username, it is giving me the observable of this object, this is specific to the, the imager side, right? So now, uh, if you want to see this thing, every service has its own uh, uh, customization, right? So if you see this POJO class, so it gives me a status, and is it successful or not, a boolean, and in the data field, it gives me the entire album list. Let me just show you the API here. 
Oh yeah, this is the one. So if I'm following this API and it's giving me success and status and uh, all the albums, the user albums are inside this, the details of the album. Just the details of the album. There are no photos here. Right, so now if you see, if you look at this, this is one object. And if I use observable, I could have used single also. Right? I can use single also because essentially there is only one object. But what I want to do is I want to use uh, the, the, uh, the, the good operators of uh, reactive programming. Right? So I cannot use it in one operator. So what I did was I transformed this ob uh, observable, which emits a single item, into an observable that emits a list of these uh, albums that is inside the data point. So now, uh, yeah, this will give me an observable which emits this. I use flat map here. If you remember flat map, what it does is it will take each item from the input observable uh, and it will convert, it will use each item to create its own observable and it will flatten everything and it will give you one observable that emits uh, all the values from all the observables. So since we have got only one value here, so what I'm doing is I'm getting this and uh, yeah, it is giving me an album list. It, it has an album list because it uh, that's actually the data part. So it is giving me this and this is turning it. So now basically uh, all the items of the album, uh, it will give me in a, uh, in a form of observable. So now I have got an observable of the user albums. That, this gives me what? Yeah, the album, not the user album. User album, user album is something that contains uh, all the albums plus the status, plus the Boolean success. And this contains only uh, the data part. I convert it into an observable of this item. And now I'm mapping it. Now, as I mentioned, uh, it has, this is the, you know, uh, this is the POJO that, that is giving me. I don't want to use it. So I converted this into something <coughs> that I will use internally. This is a uh, polio that I created. So if you look at this map, what it's doing is, it's taking one album, and there is an adapter I created, so you pass in the uh, imager model, it will give you, it will give me, it will return me my model. So now I got an object of this, created using this. And then here, this is the uh, database thing, I'm also, what I'm doing is, I'm saving this data in my local database. Save it in local database, remove it for, uh, remove any duplication is there, and I'm using buffer here. With a fetch size of 20, I'm using a buffer. So now, if you look at it, every time somebody calls fetch albums, every time, anybody can call fetch albums, right? Uh, there's, there, there could be photos in the first page and some other page, some management page. So anybody calls fetch albums, this will update my local database. And uh, if the network is not there, it is reading it from the local database, converting into the same type of observable, and it's returning. So the presenter, the presenter, what it does is it will call fetch albums. It will call fetch albums. Presenter does not, does not know the data is from local database or from uh, REST APIs from there, from uh, the actual the server. And it gets an observable of list of Pixie albums it receives. So this is observable creation. I'm using observable.create here if you notice. Uh, oh no, not creating it. Uh, uh, retrofit is giving me observable. Now once this is received, I want to process each album so I can extract out the cover image so I can show the cover that you're seeing the album cover. And also what I want is the number of uh, images an album contains plus the number of views. So now if you look at this, so now we got uh, an object of album observable. <coughs> yeah. Now just look at it. The you know how it increases the readability. Album observable. What I'm saying is subscribe it on schedulers.io. Basically, uh, IO bound threads for asynchronous operation. Everything written after this will happen in asynchronous manner. Some error happens. Just print the stack trace observe on and here after observe on. I've written Android schedules of main thread. So everything written after this will be on main thread. So 
So just looking at it, you know, okay, this will happen in diagonal thread, this will happen in foreground thread, right? And uh, yeah, I'm also using compose. So compose, what it does is it uh, uh, it transforms observable from one type to other type. Now here, essentially, now uh, it's similar. Oh no. So it takes an observable of pixie albums, it gives me an observable of stats holder. The stats holder is the class that, that is holding number of views and number of uh, uh, images. So it gave me an observable of this. I mapped it and in the map I can, I'm creating this stats holder and returning it. So now after this map is done, it will give me an observable of uh, all the observable of this stats holder. And I'm reducing it to so reduce is based on what just setting the album ID, setting the number of views, adding the number of views here, and adding the number of images here because I want to show total number of images and total number of uh, views. And after reducing it, I'm just you know uh, just returning that. So, where is this okay? Compose so this up this will apply map and reduce, it will give me the reduced. Uh, give me what reduced uh, from the statistics of the user albums. Then I've written observe one main thread because this will I think switch down to computation thread. Yeah, we're switching to computation thread. So everything written after this will be will happen. This map and reduce will happen in a computation thread. And uh, this is a, a very handy method because reduce will give you a maybe. Right? I showed you reduce will give you a maybe. It can contain one object or it may not contain an object. And you can just call maybe the two observable, it will convert it into observable. And there is a requirement for the compose method. So we did that. Okay, so now once you have the stats, I can just call subscribe and this is uh, subscribe, this takes a consumer, I guess. Yeah, consumer, it, yes. it just takes, uh, whenever there is a one value thing, right? So in Rx Java, we use consumer. It will give me the stats that was a resultant of this operation. This operation, this is the stats holder. And uh, yeah, I'm calling view.update stats with the actual statistics. So now, just after looking at this, you know, perform the because we're subscribing it on schedules.io, so perform all the retrofit and other operations in the background thread. When some error happens, you want to handle the error, you can handle the error here. And observe on uh, main thread because we are uh, what we're doing is uh, we're updating the view essentially updating view here. We're passing the album list so that the view can get the data and uh, you know render the image based from the URL. So that we're doing in the main thread. After that, we're converting from this to iterable. Uh, we're converting into iterable. This is actually uh, you know this should actually uh, this should give me a. Uh, observable of uh, single albums, but since it's not giving me, I'm converting into, from iterable, I'm converting it into this album. Composing it and observing on the main thread and this. And now this gets more interesting when you look at the filter thing. Uh, if you look at it, it looks complex, right? But it's so easy, so readable. Here we are saying is, you know, uh, search observable, when you start searching, it will call this function. Subscribe or schedule of IO. So do perform the operations in the background thread. So uh, this is on complete or non error. Filter it, filter it based on the text that I'm entering in the text box in the search box. Filter it and uh, this is the uh, this is my condition. So for filter there's one condition you have to run true or false. So if this album title contains the word or description contains that word or the provider contains that word, you return as true, otherwise it's in false. And then when we have to update the view. We are saying, you know, observe it on main thread. So, so frequent thread switching, switching is happening here. Initially, it's on the background thread. Then do all this. And after this update on the UI thread, then this compose will actually switch to computation thread. And uh, computation thread will compute all the total uh, stacks of the, of the user room. And then we'll again switching back to main thread. And then we're subscribing and we're updating this. Right, so uh, let me just show you this thing. Uh, Do 
No, on complete is uh, called you know like when you're using retrofit, right? So it is giving observable. So it is calling on complete when the data is done. And when uh, in this uh, example, when I'm using the local database, the network is not available here. Here, I'm calling the on complete myself here. But in search, when you're searching. So on complete will be when the, whenever the search uh, when search is done, right? So I'm so looking for I'm, I'm typed F. <coughs> when I type F, it will give me all the albums that starts with F or contains F or which or matches the condition. It will call on complete after that. I type F A, it will again do the same things. It will call on complete. You can you can change this uh, according to your uh, requirement. Okay, what I was showing you. Yeah, here I'm printing it. I'm printing the thread name. Okay, so let me do the search again, and we'll see what what gets printed. Okay, so I'm typing, just typing one keyword. So you can see what is happening here is. Filtering is happening in some schedulers, uh, some cache schedulers, and updating the album that is happening in the main thread. MapReduce is happening in the computation thread, updating album in the main thread. Again, MapReduce in this, 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 this. this. So we are switching between threads so easily. I never knew this was possible. Just write this. Whatever is written after this will be on the main thread. Unless it is, it uh, encounters another another observe one, like right here is a, another observe observe one. So composer will be by default uh, performing the computation thread. The compose. And it will be on a computation thread by default. No, it will not be in computation thread because uh, since compose, what is doing it is just transforming the observable. I've written here computation thread. I can remove it, so it will okay. it will do it whichever uh, the thread was there earlier, right? To do that, so this uh, this is filtering, and uh, one last thing I want to show is okay. I cannot show it from this actually. I need a device. Do you want a device or? It's because you know I this port is not working, and, I, and this port is actually currently busy and recording purposes. So when you open an album, there is a yeah. This is uh, I've also added a functionality to upload photos. Okay, I'll upload from here and I'll show it there. Because I cannot upload from the Jenny Motion. I don't know some issue. So I'm uploading in the in this album, the API album I'm updating. Okay, so while it is uploading, uh, there is the yeah here. By the way, the, do you know that you can use retrofit to upload images also, not just REST API calls, strings and all. This is uh, the code I wrote to upload the image. This is specific to this service. It requires title, description, and all. Okay, it says album upload successful. Okay, now it's showing six images. It was five earlier. Yeah, this is the image. This is the image I uploaded just now. Uh, so, in the upload, uh, things what happens is like uh, his example was there. Right? He said we want to 
say process a list of users or we want to upload it right so now this is happening here and it gives me uh, uh, let me show this thing this is the image upload this is the image upload api you choose the file it will upload it and i chose a file and it gave me this this response so it is giving me the data of the image that got uploaded with success and status that is fixed for this api success is true uh, status is 200 now uh, if you want to update it uh, update something based on the uh, status then you can use this if you don't want to do this what you can do is you can use completable completable shows what it does is it will just tell you if the operation completed successfully or failed you can use that i'm using a single because it's giving me a single value so you can use that as well so that was testing uh, so that's all i had for today thank you guys any questions uh, you have? Thank you. And then uh, Sanjay, the, the demo app is available here. Uh, so you can. I'll be making some more changes in it, but yeah, you can, you can watch it. Yeah. That we have to do because you know, I mean, other otherwise, how Java or RX Java will know how to convert this into this. Right? Okay. So we can use, uh, for example, that we have told earlier, there is one uh, imager, the other source will be Flickr. Yeah. So again, the same, uh, same way we can do the mapping. Right? Yes, same mapping. Will do. So Flickr has some other Pojo class, right? So. Uh, it has a different structure and also again you create a uh, create a uh, adapter in between and you convert it into the your your type anymore. so in this uh, what what is happening is you know this is actually kind of very generic it will tell you where which it belongs to it belongs to this service so in this what i've done i'm telling you this uh, folio class this knows which service it came from what is the username of that service because user essentially logs in and uh, the URL, the cover, the number of views, the number of uh, uh, images in the album. So yeah, so you can basically map this with everything. Oh. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so in this, uh, you have used retrofit to connect your server to the connection. So uh, is it also needed that the backend should be also reactive? Uh, no, yeah. not mandatory. So the question he has asked is, uh, if I'm using retrofit in the client. Does the backend also need to be reactive? That's a question, right? That's the question. So answer is no. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can use that separately, but it's not mandatory. It's a simple, it's a regular API also. You can make your client system reactive. Yeah. So how does systems actually work? I mean, if I upload to this backend uh, from some other device, and uh, you are getting a call in your uh, client that, okay, something is uploaded in the system. So, how this thing works and how the connections are. Okay, so you're saying your question is how do how does the client get to know that something gets uploaded? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, that doesn't happen. That will not happen. If something changes in the remote server, our client will not come to know, okay, something has changed. Magically it will not come to know. Right. So Unless you're using some sort of uh, say push notification service or some sort of polling, it will not come to know that. Right? So uh, in the example that I showed you, right, if you if you remember that Android things, right? Uh, the remote server changes and it will update the local database. Right. So that will not happen automatically. If there is some API that is calling, so I'm using an API that is getting some data, updating the UI. So right. one of the side effects with that API is it will update the local database. Okay. Whenever that uh, remote database changes, it will not give me a call. Right? Unless you're using things like that. Uh, and uh, especially I mean, I've not explored it much, but if you use it with uh, architecture components, there is something called live data. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's awesome. This will give you some changes. Live data will give you actually give you the changes. Okay, this has changed. What is the change? Yeah. And the same thing was uh, in the uh, development, the development data was the data change. In Realm also, right? Yeah. In Realm, there are some things like that. Realm has become much more than the database, right? It's become an entire mobile development platform. Yeah.
you know, extension functions like uh, as a observer. So we, we are query uh, gets result as a observer. Okay. So you see, uh, with this example. So if you are not there uh, with this example, you just need to uh, query and just use it as an observer. You get the function that you use as an observer. Oh, you get a query observable, yeah. right? With what? With yeah. Realm. With Realm, you yeah. okay. okay, nice. You use Realm. You can use Realm also. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, green DAO. This what I'm using is green DAO. It's uh, my object box is from green DAO. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the uh, in your feedback form, please uh, write next media suggestions. And here are some. Uh, if you want to some idea, you can you can write this or you can write your own suggestions. Uh, we also have a Slack group. Uh, so if you are not a part of it, you want some invitation. So please mention your email address also in the feedback form. So I'll send you an invitation by today or tomorrow. Uh, with the operator, you can modify the uh, data streams. So I think the advantage here is you can also use it when, uh, use it in, when you're using some data sites or applications. You can filter out, you know, data and then all of these. So. You can filter out data also, yes. Probably so, yes. So in data science operations, with an IoT kind of applications. Hmm, I understand. So, I mean, I'm not a data scientist, but um, yeah, you can use it there also. Because since you know this is everywhere, like RX, Py, RX Python is there. You can use RX Python probably with uh, I think it's called NumPy and Pandas library for uh, for data processing and uh, you know these things, uh, big data things. How different is it with data mining? What we see is the observer observe some change in model and the data mining. Data binding, uh, data binding, yeah, I mean, like uh, you're talking about MDBM sort of thing. Yeah. So it, it binds the data, right? So it it will just, if the data model updates, it will update the view, right? That's what you're talking about, right? So uh, difference is in like, you know, this is this is not just uh, one thing, right? It's a, it's a broad concept. It's in a lot of things. It's not just about updating the data. It's about, you know, adding side effects and resilience and readability. So you can use, uh, this with MVVM as well. So, while you're transferring data from, uh, you know, the actual the source of the data, from there you're updating the model, the view model. For that you can do the retrofit, uh, not the retrofit, the reactive program. These are some uh, references that I used. If you're uh, serious about learning uh, uh, RX Java, I'll share this. So these are some good resources. There's too much to note, like so. I'll mm -hmm. I'll share this. Uh, PPT. And uh, before you leave, there is a snacks outside, so please have them before leaving. Uh, and if you have like uh, not related to this, if you have any other questions, uh, we in in meetup. So how many of you are actually coming here for the first time? Okay, a lot of you. So uh, what we usually do is you know. Uh, after the meetup is done, we usually, uh, as, a, as a community, we try to solve some issues that you have, not necessarily related to the meetup that we're having. So, uh, if you have like any questions, you can ask and, you know, uh, the rest of us can gather and uh, maybe we can try to solve your, your issues that you have. You're facing maybe. <laughs>